What's going on there guys? Good afternoon. This is the Earth Master here with an update video on this Tuesday, August uh, 4th, 2022. August 4th, about 12.09 uh, p.m. California time. The latest quake, uh, quake shows a 3.6 earthquake here around the Indonesia region, right at the southern end of the Philippine plate. Overnight, we have seen some activity kind of ramping up here. Uh, in and around this area with the uh, white rings indicating some more recent earthquake activity. A little bit of movement uh, down there overnight as well in New Zealand with a 3.1. Also a pretty good cluster of quakes off uh, into the Middle America Trench. Let's go ahead and check out the latest activity here across the model Earth here, at least the flat scale model. We'll get back to solar weather here in just a second. Here's the latest activity here. Notice the USGS really not showing anything far as movement here in the Middle America Trench region. Look at that. Not reporting anything at all. So uh, for that matter, we're going to open up the EMSC model. And uh, it's a little different agency that reports earthquake activity around the globe, or at least around the map, flat scale map. Uh, these guys are reporting a pretty good cluster of quakes here. We're going to zoom into the Middle America Trench here real quick, hopefully. See if these guys are functioning, which they are, I believe. There we go. Uh, there's that movement. There's quite a few fours in the mix as well. Uh, 4.3, it looks like. Again, this is off the coast of, uh, let's see exactly where this is at. A couple earthquakes there off the coast of Mexico is what it shows here. Uh, some of that into the low four range. Looks like a couple last night. Most of this activity kicking up this morning and within the last hour. So pretty good increase in activity here along the southern end of the, um, oh, about the center section here of the Middle America Trench. I'm watching that pretty closely. We had seen some activity also uh, into the Gulf of California region uh, this morning. Uh, USGS actually issued, or um, yeah, they, they actually put that up on the map, surprisingly, 3.6 down here along the uh, plate boundary. That is uh, just south of the border, off of the Imperial Fault Zone, the plate boundary down here. A little 3.6 uh, being shown there on the map. Far as 2.5 and above goes, that's about it. We had one earthquake here on the creeping section. 2.5 at 8.5 kilometers. We'll bring up the all magnitudes here and take a little bit uh, more broader look at the earthquake activity. Start up here in the Pacific Northwest, some typical movement up there around Mount St. Helens and Mount Rainier, just some small microquakes. Also at Mount Hood today, um, a couple earthquakes right smack at the summit, a 0.3, looks to be the largest quake. We'll check out the seismograph station of Mount Hood here in just a little bit. Uh, Northern California still seeing some activity, a little cluster of movement, uh, including one up here, 1.7 off the coast, or actually it looks like it's inland. Uh, southwest of the Ferndale area. Now this is 18 kilometers deep uh, underneath this region. Of course the Cascadia Megathrust area sits offshore and that is a, a subduction zone earthquake, 1.7. Movement also into the uh, looks like the Ukiah area north of Napa. There's that movement along the creeping section of the San Andreas Fault. Not a whole lot though if you look through the Sierra Nevadas and across the um, the uh, north of the Garlock Fault shear zone. Things a little on the quiet side today and about the same here for Southern California aside from that quake uh, that we seen earlier uh, this morning time frame there south of the border. Things are very quiet. No swarming to take note of in the area. Movement across western portions of Nevada here all showing some seismic activity mostly microquakes and up here at Yellowstone National Park. Uh, had a little bit of movement here around the eastern section of the park, a 2.2 near Silvergate. That's kind of weird. 40 kilometers south of Silvergate, Montana. Why don't they just say um, Wyoming? I mean, it's basically there in Wyoming, well south of the border, but okay. 2.2 uh, at 11 kilometers deep. Now we can check out the Yellowstone seismograph stations here. And uh, you can see the swarm is still continuing up here around the northwest corner of the park. Uh, this is like can't remember how many days now in a row of at least some type of earthquake activity, but it's still an ongoing thing. No major increase uh, or sizable magnitudes uh, that I can see listed on the graphs there. Just a little cons consistent earthquake swarm. The 2.2 struck over here 
around the northeast corner of the park. Notice that uh, signature here. And this is some type of um, network interference. Looks like it's going off every um, 45 seconds, every minute or so. Very consistent with a uh, outside interference. But uh, def definitely see that 2.2 showing up more prominently on the eastern section here of the park compared to areas over here around the uh, northwestern portion. But swarm here and a little bit of activity here today. All right, let's see what else we got here as we back out and uh, check out Oklahoma. This movement here is from last night. Same for the Texas area. Not a whole lot of uh, newer movement. And uh, about the same for the Puerto Rico Trench, although we're getting a little swarm of activity across the Mona Passage here overnight. Uh, and the swarm up here that we're monitoring by the Puerto Rico Trench looks like it has died down. But uh, a little bit of activity increasing there in the region, a 4.1 overnight in the Dominican Republic and the typical swarming around the southwest region of Puerto Rico. South America, nah, we're getting, those. let's see, what do we got here? Looks like a couple fours overnight in the Argentina area. And the majority of these have been relatively deep here into the subduction zone of the Peru Chile Trench. Um, so might want to watch that getting quite a few fours down dip into the subduction area that I'm sure is adding some further strain for the next big one uh, along the uh, the coastline there of South America. So we'll watch that pretty closely. Up into Alaska, things kind of lighten up up there, it looks like. Uh, 2.5 map and above, though, only shows one 3.2 uh, just outside the Cook Inlet and also over here at 3.0 up towards the... Uh, the fair weather fault plate boundary up here between the North American and the Pacific plate. All other activity here listed on the map, mostly microquakes throughout the area. Around the uh, northwestern portion of the Pacific Ring of Fire, an older movement earthquake there from yesterday, 4.0 at a uh, pretty deep level, 415 kilometers deep into the uh, Kuril Kamchatka Trench. Movement around the Philippine plate has kind of died off a little bit, uh, although I think some of the USGS maps are not showing that uh, activity that we've seen there on the globe. Uh, a little bit of movement also down around the Fiji area, although this looks pretty old. Older movement activity from yesterday. Over here around the Morocco area, getting a swarm of activity off the coast once again, 4.9 and a 4.2. Looks like uh, that area is starting to kick back up. We did see a little bit of swarming here. Oh, it's been a couple months now since we've seen uh, any any type of activity like this. But it was swarming pretty good. Looks like that's starting to return back to the region. Up here in the Atlantic Ocean, still seeing some activity here. North of the Charlie Gibbs Fracture Zone. A couple fours kicking off there overnight in this morning time frame. Still watching that for um, at least a clue as to what may be going on there. Uh, solar, let's check out the trimmer map here from last night. That showed uh, zero epicenters of trimmer, oh, which is kind of odd. So let's check out the uh, volcano there at Mount Hood. See what we got for seismic activity. There's a couple of those quakes there noted on the map and also noted on the USGS map. They're very small earthquakes. But uh, we're going to check the recorded seismograph here and see what they got towards the summit around the Palmer Lift. I'll stand by for just a second. Sometimes it takes a minute for this thing to key up. Uh, and there's some of those earthquakes, very small ones, very small. This activity right here kind of looks like it's a, something kicking on for a little bit, uh, maybe a generator. Uh, definitely not earthquake activity, earthquake activity going to look something like that and there's a couple of them very small ones but uh, some type of environmental interference kicking up there at the uh, down here within the last few hours all right space weather from the solarham.net website still a 35 percent chance of an x flare it's a pretty high probability uh, we did not get to the g2 class storming category last night actually calmed down pretty nicely uh, that is still forecasted though it looks like uh, possibly throughout the day today and uh, tomorrow as well g1 conditions uh, so we'll see how that plays out but right now i think the main threat is the flare level threat uh, these guys here kind of getting up in on, getting in on it as well uh, ar 3110 3112 currently trading low level m flares both regions appear poised to produce something much stronger obviously right 
Uh, that's a massive sunspot. 3112 up here is a, uh, a pretty big one. Looks like it's got a newly uh, assigned sunspot here as well. 3116 uh, getting in on the growth of that sunspot. Looks like there's some further development uh, as we head eastward on the sun as well. So this thing is just ginormous, massive sunspot that uh, we're just kind of watching, waiting for it to possibly produce something. There's a lot of close magnetic fields here, the blue or the uh, yeah the blue and the orange red colors. Uh, a lot of complex uh, activity there with that sunspot that does harbor a um, let's see which uh, class that harbors 3112, a beta gamma delta class that was issued uh, looks like on the 30th but uh, it's kind of been growing and evolving since then so we'll watch for that flaring threat here potentially from 3112 also 3110 over here does harbor some uh, complex fields although it's getting a little bit on the western side of the sun anything that is earth or anything that does pop off as far as a CME will be directed away from earth uh, it's this one right here that is going to be setting up for a bullseye shot at the earth um, if something were to happen it would definitely be earth directed so we'll watch that very closely throughout the day today and tomorrow as that rotates further into view right now uh, looking at uh, the solar flare chart we did see an m flare kick up here with a kind of a it looks like there was a cme that was produced not for certain which one that came from uh, m 1.6 but over the last hour or so things have been kind of uh, tapering off a little bit so that m uh let's see here which one was that m1.6 right i don't think they have it listed up here that was the m4.2 so not 100 percent certain exactly where that came from but uh we'll watch these two sunspots and see how it plays out look at that ginormous sunspot region up here And that's pretty, uh, if you got a solar tol a telescope, solar camera, and got to make sure that's solar designed for looking at the sun, uh, you'd be easily able to spot that uh, beautiful large sunspot. That's just huge. It's one of the largest sunspots here in the last couple of years. And that's something worth watching uh, pretty closely because it's, it's uh, evolving. It's getting pretty complex and it's lining up perfectly. Uh, if it should pop off uh, a uh, a major flare and subsequent large CME, it would be uh, all earth directed for sure. So we'll keep an eye on that, folks. Um, uh, let's see what else we got. Solar time or real time solar wind here looks uh, pretty neutral. Not a whole lot going on. Alrighty, uh, let's see what do we got for, for Hawaii. I always jump over Hawaii. I'm not for certain why I do. It's just right there in the middle. I, maybe I should start with Hawaii first. Uh, Mona Loa kicking up here. Looks like some swarming still overnight, uh, although not as active. Nothing even coming in within the last hour there at the Big Island. So we'll, we'll definitely include that in our updates. Just got to remember not to skip out there. It happens, though. All right, folks, have a glorious day out there. Take care, and we will chat you guys real soon. Make sure you... Uh, subscribe here onto the channel and for those of you still listening at the end of this video uh, we do have a new decals out pretty cool ones uh, these are kind of oval shaped the other ones were kind of square had the red sun this here is a uh, five by three um, decal pretty nice one weather resistant weatherproof i think these ones are a little bit more uh, more uh Oh, what's the word? More durable. The other ones were too. I still have my original one on my vehicle. And uh, it's still up there. It hasn't faded. hasn't peeled. And it's it's lasted through the brutal 115 degree days out here in California. So, um, yeah. So, if you want a couple new decals, I think you guys know what to do. Send me an email. The email is listed underneath the channel description. But if you don't want to look there, it's uh, earthmastermail at gmail.com earthmastermail at gmail.com and uh, make sure you include your name at mailing address and um, we'll send you a, get the, a couple off in the mail to you guys I do have a few hundred here to give away so uh, th again they're pretty nice I like them 
Um, and if you're looking, uh, wondering what they look like, uh, I do have uh, a couple photos there back on my post, the community post here on the YouTube channel and also on Facebook there. We kind of uh, keyed them up there for a little bit just to see what folks would say. And uh, I think a pretty good response. All right, folks, catch you guys a little bit later on. Stay safe out there and uh, we'll chat at you guys real soon. Peace out.